Okay, I'm checking my app. So that. This is a second mic check and stand, stay, stand by for Father Rick Walsh. We have two minutes to go. to the Church of St. Paul the Apostle as we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand and join in our gathering song, Sing a New Song.
Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the Church of St. Paul the Apostle here on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. We give thanks to God for gathering us here safely today. Give thanks to God for those of you here joining us on Facebook or YouTube. Welcome. We begin our celebration as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we begin the celebration, mindful of the gospel where Jesus is uh, calling people to uh, follow him, calling people to continue to uh, open up their hearts and minds to the Lord as he feeds them, we are reminded that he feeds us as well every time we approach this altar. So we begin by giving thanks for that and asking the Lord to help us to prepare ourselves for this wonderful mystery of God feeding us. see on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer our prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as our creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who are, have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy? Feed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in, in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate you from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. 
For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them and he cured their sick. When it was evening, his disciples approached him and said, this is a deserted place, it's already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the villages to buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, there's no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, bring them here to me and he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, Jesus said the blessing, broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, 12 wicker baskets full. Those who ate, were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. So the past few weeks, we've been up in the Northern Territory in Galilee area with Jesus and his home area, Capernaum as well. We've been hearing messages of parables of what the kingdom of God is like, and he gives all these agricultural images, the sower and the seed, the mustard seed that starts off really, really tiny and grows big, like a woman taking dough and putting yeast in it so that the dough rises in that wonderful, invisible kind of way. Last week, we had these parables about searching for something, you know, the hidden treasure buried in the field, that the kingdom is like that. the pearl in the oyster, looking for that particular wonderful pearl, valuables in the deep, deep, dark waters being pulled up by the nets. And today, we follow Jesus in Matthew's version, out away from the crowds, or trying to get away from the crowds, but they follow him into the wilderness. Why? Because they have found their great treasure, their pearl of great value, and they don't want to let Jesus go. 
life was so hard for the vast majority of those folks living at that time, Jesus' words must have been really powerful to kind of get them to open up their hearts to him a bit and to follow him all the way out into the wilderness. If there were poll conductors back in those days and they were to ask the multitude of folks in the wilderness who were with Jesus, why are you here? Why are you following this Jesus from Nazareth? I think the number one answer would be hunger. Not physical hunger, but spiritual hunger. Demographers, those who kind of look around at populations and such and have lots of stats for us, they tell us that there are a multitude of baptized Catholics living in our parish boundaries. Yes, we have boundaries still, though many of you may well not live within the boundaries of the physical parish, and I'm glad that you're here. Uh, I'm glad that you came through the wilderness of New York City, the boroughs, to get here. Our official boundaries go from 7th Avenue to the east over there, like Central Park South and over down, 7th Avenue to 54th Street to the south. And then up at the north, we go Central Park West up to 65th, and then down over 65th, both 54th, 65th, all the way to the Hudson River. That's our parish boundaries. In that radius, demographers tell us, there are about six to 7,000 people, including women and children, who have been or still consider themselves to be Catholic. They were baptized Catholic. That is a multitude. If we were to conduct a poll of these folks living in our midst as to why they are not here today with us, I'm sure they give a lot of different reasons, as we have given from time to time for ourselves, not coming to church, whatever it is. I suspect the vast majority of the answers, however, would have nothing to do with the list that Paul just gave us about separating us from Christ and Christ's love. I don't think it's famine that's keeping people from coming to church or nakedness or danger or you know, threats of uh, death. However, a very frightening reason that people are not here, and I'm talking normally in the non-COVID times, obviously, huh? Or are not even watching us on Facebook right now or on YouTube, is due to apathy. I say that's scary because that word apathy, it comes from the Greek pathos, meaning passion, emotion, feeling, with apathos or apathy, there's no feeling. There's no passion. Like the joke says, call me apathetic, I don't care. That kind of thing. Our baptized sisters and brothers, not here today, because in part, because of their apathy, they have separated themselves from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Now, Jesus, God, still loves them, of course. But apathy helps us to close our hearts to all people and even to God. Back over 50 years ago, President Kennedy made the observation in a speech. He said, we are in danger of becoming a nation of spectators. And that was back when color TV screens were just coming out. Imagine what he would think today if we could pop them up into our culture at our time now. The late congressman, John Lewis, he once said, democracy is an action. It's not a thing. It demands that people, demos in Greek, people, take part in it. Like democracy, Eucharist is an action as well. Eucharist demands that the faithful respond to the action of God's love for us the breaking and the sharing of the body of Christ is an act of love, passion, compassion, as we heard Jesus took pity or compassion on the crowds that followed him out into the wilderness. Just as Jesus took compassion on those people, just as he made his disciples feed the multitude 
in a way they didn't even know that they could do, so too does Jesus call us to action. Jesus calls us at every Eucharist to do this in memory of me. We, Christ's body today, are commanded by Jesus to break our body, to share our life with those around us. This is what we do when we say, do this in memory of me. This is what Jesus means. Now, if you're here for the first time ever, or a first time in a very long time, watching at home or at work, wherever you are, on the computer screen or your cell phone, I hope that you recognize there's some kind of stirring if you're here for the first time. Something has stirred inside you, some mini bit of passion, a flame of faith perhaps, that came to you in your baptism, but now it's burning a little brighter. And that if you start to feel this something, even if it's anger at priests like me, or hypocrisy of people who go to church on Sunday, whatever it is, that's wonderful, that you're feeling something. It really is. So please allow those feelings to surface, whether they're negative or positive feelings, because those feelings are a sign that you and I are alive, that we have something inside us that knows that there's something more. There is a hunger. There's a desire for meaning, something that only God can fulfill for each one of us. To help this out, to reach people who perhaps are in the multitude around us here and all over the place, really, I pray that this effort that we're going to begin soon, this fall, called Virtual Church, I hope that this Virch Church becomes something that really does lead people back to a relationship with Jesus, back to a relationship with Christ's body, and here that would be us at St. Paul the Apostle. I ask you all who are here now and who have passion, who have some suffering even, whatever that passion is, that you will also help people by your own behaviors, by your own words, that you'll help others to come to give God a chance. There was an old song in the 40s called Taking a Chance on Love. Well, if God is love, it's like singing Taking a Chance on God. I pray that as we celebrate this Eucharist today, we experience that command again, do this in memory of me, that we then break ourselves open, that we share our bodies with others. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayer in the name of Jesus, who had compassion on the multitude and whose bounty feeds us all. of Jesus throughout the world. May we be known for our generous sharing with others all the Lord has graciously shared with us. Loving God, we place our trust in your providence. Hear these prayers we bring to you through your Son, our Lord Jesus, in whose name we pray. As you are seated now, as we prepare the altar, please take a note of where you're seated. You should be with something blue on your back at the top of the pew so that we keep the safe area of distance from one another. 
And if you are uh, thinking there'll be a collection, there is no proper collection as such yet. So if you would like to share your resources with us, we ask you to uh, put your uh, envelope or whatever it is in the basket at the back on the way out of church. For those of you at home, uh, for those of you here as well, there's always our Faith Direct, our online giving, which is a very fine way uh, to continue to share with us whether you can be here in person or not. Thank you very much for your generosity. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that these our gifts, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. We pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving you thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the men and women who serve you. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Paul the Apostle, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now in song we pray together the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, I will be Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer those around us a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I'd like to ask people to begin the procession for communion. We start on the north side, those on the outside to go down to the back, up and around to the front. You folks in the front here will be the last ones on this side. You folks, after everybody's getting ready to f finish up, you start to go down the back on that side. When you approach the uh, minister, myself, when you approach me for communion, please keep your mask on. We're giving out by hand only. Put your hand out. I'll, put my, I'll drop the host in, careful not to touch your hand and then you walk over to one of the boxes on either side, remove your mask, receive communion, and walk back. Thank you.
Let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for us, make us worthy of eternal redemption. We pray this through Christ our Lord. There's just one announcement, it's an important one. Father Matt Berrios will be leaving us soon to go to Rome to begin studies in ancient languages. Uh, so we are going to be saying goodbye to him without a big party because of COVID. However, if you get e-blasts, you've seen this already, but if you don't get our e-blasts, we're looking for folks to share uh, a, a video, a small video that we can put together in what they call a video card. I guess you younger people are used to this. I don't know. So anyhow, I think it's exciting, really wonderful way for us to express our affection and love for Father Matt. But he'll be here at all the masses next weekend preaching uh, the good news for the last time. So way, uh, one way to say thank you to Father Matt. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ending now. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another.